Coomba Seaside Radio. I'm here at Sperm Point on a beautiful sunny morning with Dave Steen Vorden, the Superintendent Coxon. On the Humber lifeboat. That's correct, yes. Uh, right, and you're here until you get a call out, if you get a call out today. Well, we're open, we're not going to get one today because it's such a lovely day, but if anyone gets in trouble, we don't mind because it's going to be a lovely day out in the water anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what sort of rescues do you perform out here? Down at the Humber lifeboat station, we get any rescue you can basically think of uh, on the ocean. You will get anything from a gas rig in trouble, ships colliding, fires, mm. medical evacuations is probably the most what we'll actually do. And mm. then you tow your homes for breakdowns. Right, and how far is your range? How far do you go? Our range, we cover to the south and flank with Skegness lifeboat, and to the north, Brillington. Mm. And we've now got a declared facility of up to 100 mile off. Oh, wonderful. Um, but I have heard rumours that they are going to um, just have five stations, central It's got absolutely nothing at all to do with the L&I. Um, it's actually Maritime and Coast Guard Agency who are the coordinators. Oh, right. So there is there, there is no worry for any sailor actually out on the, on the ocean. Do not worry, the L&I are not closing lifeboat stations. So you're always going to be here to rescue? Always going to be here, yeah. The mm -hmm. only thing that you'll probably find is there would be a different way it's coordinated from the Coast Guard. But that, again, shouldn't affect what we, what we do in the own line. I'd heard rumours that it would take longer because of the centralisation of it. No, this is, is, it may take longer um, before we're informed in the first instance. Um, but I, I can't really see that myself personally. Um, what we might lose a little bit of, of local knowledge. Right. Mm. But um, everybody on Sperm Point is, is going to be still doing the same job uh, they're doing uh, 233 now. 233 lifeboat stations around the Amalai, nothing will change whatsoever. So it's perfectly safe. And how long have you been working here? I've been at Sperm Point 21 years. Um, and before that I was a volunteer lifeboatman at Cleethorpes. I've been lifeboating now for 25 years. Uh, is there a family history of this? Uh, I tend to find when I've spoken to people that perhaps their fathers or their grandfathers have yeah, been right, it's, it's, I'm the first one in my family, but that's because uh, they established a, a new station at Cleethorpe, so it was the start of, rather than an already established station. But mm. here at, at, at Humble Lifeboat Station, I've got a father and son. Um, mm. Steve Purvis, one of my crew members, goes back to his great-grandfather in uh, Bridlington. So it is a normal tradition that it goes from father to son and now to daughter. You know, oh, you've got some lady lifeboats. We've, no, la we've <laughs> no ladies at Humber yet. Um, it's only a matter of time. But there's very few lifeboat stations now that haven't got ladies on the crew. Really? I didn't realise mm. that. And, and what are the sort of qualifications you need to be on a lifeboat Selflessness. Um, you don't need a great amount of qualifications. What you need is a selfless attitude to just go out there and help people. Right. A willingness to do something. And that's so so no sort of um, GCSEs, MVQs? No, no, if you want to come in as a crew member, you don't need anything. As you creep up the ranks, start to get towards the coxswain mechanic, positions mm. like that on the boat, then you'll need some more formal qualifications. Right. Uh, presumably, you have to be able to swim. Yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> controlled float is the best description because we wear life jackets, full safety equipment and everything. And if you can actually control yourself in the water with all that kit on, um, that, that's all you need that's to do. That's all you need. Inshore lifeboatmen, yeah, they, they really need to be able to swim because they do actually get into the water to assist people. So. Right. And this is a beautiful place to be, but I know that in the winter it's pretty desolate and you sometimes get cut off down here. It's, it's on average now about a dozen times a year we'll get the road wash over where we can't get up and down on uh, anything other than a 4 before. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons this station has got a full-time lifeboat crew of residential people because of its remoteness. We yeah. can't operate anywhere else. No. Um, uh, and Sperm Point is the perfect position, I think, for, for setting off with a humble perfect. lifeboat. And there are families here that you, you'll have families with you. There's seven of us here now with the families. Um, mm. His uh, wives, kids, all the lot, we look around a small little village. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, except, uh, do you have a shop here? <laughs> no, the, we've got the little lifeboat shop which is over your shoulder. Uh, oh, oh yeah. it's to buy life. I'm thinking but, of basics. No, we, we, we get the big supermarkets, so we can do an online shop now with the big supermarkets. Oh, they come down yeah, here for you, do they? Down, yeah. oh, so it's lovely. made life a lot more easier. Of course. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, so the sea's in your blood, really? Yes, I'm. Uh, uh, an ex-fisherman, um, spent nearly all my working life at sea. My father was an engineer on things. You usually find that they make the best lifeboatmen. 
but it, mm. there is only about eight or nine percent um, of lifeboat crews now are, 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 have got any sort of maritime background. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you're the sorry, what's well, the coxswain? Is yes. it? Yes. What is the coxswain's duties? Coxswain's duties at this station is slightly different to a normal lifeboat station. Right. Um, is is I have the title of superintendent coxswain because I look after all the administration of the station. All the administration of the lifeboat families, the houses, but a mm. coxswain's duty at a normal lifeboat station is the running of the lifeboat. He's the captain. Right. He's, in, he's he runs the training. He runs the the mm. uh, boat when she's at sea on a rescue. Uh, and make sure everything's up to scratch with the help of the mechanic. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it generally, <laughs> mm. do you find it a bit odious with all this? Uh, I, I mean, I presume you must have a lot of paperwork. The, the, the paperwork is getting more. Um, mm -hmm. Coming from my background at sea, it, it is, is we, we had a lot of legislation uh, for fishing quotas and everything. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is just legislation for what I believe for legislation's sake. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is extremely important. We do need a paper trail for everything we do nowadays. Um, and I look at it as, as that it's a job that needs to be done, just get on and do it. I'm not saying it's the most enjoyable part of, of the <laughs> job, but it's now getting to be the largest part. Uh, when I first took over back in 2004, I probably had about 40% uh, of my time was spent in paperwork, 60% with actually doing the job. It's probably the other way around now. 60-70% yeah, you know, with the with the, with the paperwork, and 30% the, the the boat. So it's quite different now yeah. to what yeah. it used to be. Uh, do you enjoy it just as much as when you started? Probably more so. I always said this time where I started to not want to get up in the morning, not want to do it, it's the time to hang my life jacket up. Uh, I enjoy it more now because obviously I'm now the coxswain. Um, you, 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 you're boss of your own life, it's, it's quite a nice feeling. Mm -hmm. But uh, you've also got a lot of responsibility with the other men as well. Definitely, if, if anybody wants to understand the saying, burden of command, mm. um, they need to go out on a lifeboat as the coxswain in bad weather. And then you understand exactly where it comes from. I never did. <laughs> no, I no. used to question my old coxswains in the past and wonder why they did things. I now fully understand completely why they did it. Uh, <laughs> and, and it would have been a better for them if I'd have known then, but you uh, don't know until you actually pick up that range of the coxswain. So you can see yourself being here for many more years, really. My normal retirement date is the 14th of June next year. Um, but we can now, with uh, again with some of the decent legislation that comes out of Europe, <laughs> is with ages and we can't be forced to retire now. So hopefully I've got another six years to go. Well, I wish you the very best of luck and I hope you have a nice quiet day to enjoy the sun today. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. Thank you.